happy morning to all girls welcome you once again for my english class this is your priya ma'am today we are going to see and discuss mother teresa written by f g herard actually this is a biography written by f g herard first of all what is meant by biography biography is an account of somebody's life written by somebody else complete with details of the most important parts a biography is not to be confused with an autobiography an account of someone's life written by the subject himself what is an example of a biography a biography is a description of a real person's life including factual details as well as stories from the person's life the vast majority of biography examples are written about people who are or were famous such as politicians actors athletes and so on what are the four types of biography a biography is a specialized form of history It is an account of events based upon the example of one person's life. There are four basic types of biographies: historical fiction, academic, fictional academic, and then prophetic biography. What is the difference between biography and autobiography? Simply put, a biography is the life history of an in the usual written by someone else an autobiography is the story of a person's life written by that person and a memoir is a collection of memories written by the person themselves this is the explanation of biography so now come to that mother teresa written by f g herod let me see about f g herod f g herod born 73 b c died 4 b c was born on 1906 king of judea herod the great king of judea was an example of class of princes who kept their thrones by balancing the delicate relations with the roman empire herod's much criticized relationship with roman would keep judea safe and establish a jewish state the writings of the author exhibit his talent of handling the political and issue of christians in the society In writing the author shows a talent of handling the politician political and issues of christians in the society Some of his famous works are What men believe 1968 The life of christ 1970 World religion 1970 Who cares christianity and modern problems 1972 the gospels a first commentary 1976 and challenge 1980 this is about f g herod so move to the next part mother teresa was more an indian than a citizen of the country of first actual birth She was born on 26th August 1910 in Yugoslavia. Her childhood name was an Agnes Konax Bujakshi. Mother Teresa possessed a great attributes that set her apart from many. After completing her school, she became a nun and came to India. Mother Teresa made many contributions in changing the lives of the poor people in India. 
she started teaching in big in the beginning and then devoted herself in the service of the poor she founded missionaries of charity and opened many auspicious leper houses and orphanages these who have served the hungry the homeless lepers sick and dying people her great work was recognized and appreciated all over the world mother teresa was given several awards for her works the nobel prize the bharat ratna the padma shri and the nehru award are some of them she died at the age of 87 on the september 1997 in calcutta her death was home bemoaned by all irrespective of their faith status or nationality mother teresa is the mother of the world and will always be remembered by everyone so these are the information about we were discussed in shortly about mother teresa let we go in some more interesting facts and some of her, her interesting service mother teresa blessed with a helping heart toward the needy mother teresa possessed great attributes that set her apart from many mother teresa has possibly one of the most famous missionaries that have brought dignity to innumerable human lives with her dedication to human humanitarian work mother teresa made many contributions in changing the lives of the poor people in india mother teresa was more than an indian than a citizen of the country of her actual birth she was born on 26th august 1910 in yugoslavia her childhood name was hagnes gonax bojakshi after completing her school she became a nun of and came to india she started teaching in the beginning of and then devoted herself in the service of the poor when she was working as a teacher she saw the children of the slum devilers which touched her heart deeply mother teresa decided to spend her whole life to bring them relief she resigned from the service with the permission of the church and stood amongst the half fed and off clothed children in 1948 she began her work of the charity and started visiting the slums to feed and clothe the needy in 1950 the vatican gave her permission to rename the local dicosis missionaries of homeless missionaries of charity these who serve the hungry the homeless lepers sick and dying people in 1952 mother teresa started a auspicious in calcutta very soon many people were attracted to her work and donation started flowing in locally and internationally she was able to open more auspicious leper houses and orphanages mother teresa was given several awards for her work the nobel prize the bharat ratna the padma shri and nehru award are some of them her work had spread all over the world her great work was recognized and appreciated all over the world she got frequent invitations to visit other countries and start her missions there as well she had acquired all this with the help of love faith and prayers she died at the age of 87 on 5th september 1997 in kolkata her death was 
be mourned by all irrespective of their faith status and nationality mother teresa is the mother of the world and has loved by everyone now she may not be physically present between has but she will always remain in everyone's heart the organizations run by herself still continuously serving the poor people in different areas with the same spread let's see detailing biography of mother teresa mother teresa is the founder of missionaries of charity mother teresa was born on august 26 1919 in skopje the current capital of republic of macedonia her father's name was nikore bojekshi her mother's name was dron fell bojekshi her father was an albanian businessman benefactor politician and mother was a gosher grosher her parents named her agnes gonaks bojekshi her father died when she was 8 years old Agnes attended a convent run primary school and then a state run secondary school as a girl as a girl she sang in the local sacred art choir in 1928 and an 18 years old agnes decided to become a nun and set off for Ireland to join the sisters of Larato and Dublin it was that that she took the name sister mary teresa sister mary teresa came to india in 1929 and initiated her novitiate novitiate in Darjeeling West Bengal has a teacher at St Teresa's school Sister Teresa took her first religious vows in May 1931 on May 24 1937 she took her final profession of vows and with and with that acquired the name which the world recognized her with today mother teresa the next 20 years of her life mother teresa dedicated to serving as a teacher at at the st mary school graduating to the post of the principal in 1944 on september 10 1946 it transformed her life completely in the january of 1948 has she received a final approval from the local archbishop ferdinand perrier to pursue the new calling She began missionary work with the poor on August 17, 1948, replacing her traditional Loreto habit with simple white cotton sari with the blue border. So, Hefty Herod's description of her in this essay brings her alive to us. I shall not leave this hospital. until i know that you have given her bread the little woman barely 5 feet tall wearing a cheap white sari with a blue border and the small cross hanging below her left shoulder had begun her work in calcutta among the poorest of the poor 
among the poorest of the poor she started her service her name known to millions throughout the world his mother teresa she had picked up the rich creature half eaten by rats and ants and carried her to nearest hospital had she not been frail she knew that the woman most likely would have been turned out into the street again the hospital just cannot cope with the population of calcutta actually calcutta calcutta is the one of the highest in population okay the hospital is can't cooperate with that much of population for allotting to all patients to giving a bed to everyone at the time she she is standard for particular per person i shall not leave this place leave this hospital until i know that until i know that you have given her bed so actually she collecting a food she picked up his this rich creature half eaten food by rats and ants and carried her to the nearest hospital so many of them live and die on its pavement they suffer the appalling heat of the day the chill of the night the hunger and loneliness the beg for food and when starving they steal cooking what little they get on small fires and in this manner eke out their rich lives rich rich lives until this is attack this is this this is attacks them and they die in despair so actually kipling and nehru is called the city of dreadful night calcutta is according to kipling city of dreadful night according to nehru called it is a nightmare that is it is a nightmare of city over the years refugees fleeing from feminine flood and plague play a uh, plague have arrived there so so many natural disaster have happened there so many people were di- died because of flood because of plague and because of starvation so now her first outing was on december 21 1948 to help the people in the slum mother teresa finally received permission by the vatican to start the congregation that now has missionary of charity in october 7 1950 the congregation started off with 13 members actually mother teresa she began her life more pleasant surrounding she was born in yugoslavia in 1910 all those things we saw in the beginning of the class she was born in yugoslavia in 1910 at the age of 12 she decided to be a missionary then at 18 to be a nun she was sent to larito abbey dublin where the girls trained for work in india soon after she arrived in india she was appointed geography teacher at st mary high school in calcutta later she became its principal just behind the lovely gardens of the high school lay the city slum they were rarely out of her mind in fact she would take her people down to see them something must be done about this she told them then in september 1946 while on a train journey she felt very strongly a call from god to work among the poor so she she received a call from god to work among for the poor but it is not easy for a nun to leave her order at last after 2 years she was granted a permit directly from the pope to become an unenclosed nun under the care of archbishop of calcutta
in 1952 she inaugurated the first home for the dying then she initiating a home for those suffering henson's disease commonly known as leprosy the home was called shanti nagar she left the child where she had been very happy and went the america medical missionary sisters in patna to take a 6 month nursing course then with 5 rupees in a packet and no home to go to she arrived in calcutta she went straight to the slum found someone there who let her have a room free and begin her work she visited home after home she begged for food for the starving and medicine for the sick actually she was she went to america for a medical missionary training in patna to take a 6 month nursing course then she returned with a 5 rupee 5 rupees in a packet and no home to go in calcutta she arrived at calcutta there is no no room no home at all for her she went straight to the slum place and she found someone there who let her have room free and began her work she just straightly went to the slum area and then she found someone who let her who gave uh, who will give her a free home for for begin her service she visited home after home she begged for food for the starving and medicine for the sick she begged she begged the food for uh, those who are sick those who are need a medicine those who are in starving she home to home she went and she begged food for food and medicine she began as a school with five children in slum compound she had nothing to start with the first day they wrote the bengali alphabet in the mud the next day a table a chair arrived the following day a cupboard people also came to help her from this humble start has grown the care and education of many thousands of neglected children today there are no less than 81 such schools in 1955 mother teresa opened the home for a for the orphan and homeless youth named has nirmala shishu bhavan or the children or the children home of the immaculated heart by 1960 missionaries of charity had opened several auspicious orphanages and leper houses all over india in 1963 missionary of charity brother was founded those who joined in it had to give up their lives completely to the work we do not take a volunteer work mother teresa said because volunteers require time off for leisure when asked if she did not take a holiday sometimes she replied every day is a holiday the usual three vows are taken poverty chastity and obedience to the to these is added a fourth to give whole hearted free sub- survival to the poorest of the poor to christ in his distressing disguise mother teresa teaches her sisters to see christ in everyone in serving them they are serving christ in and is serving actually mother teresa teaches her sister see christ in everyone if you are doing a service you will see the christ in her suffer in a suffering so actually usually three vows are taken that is a poverty poverty chastity and obedience along with she added fourth one that is to give whole hearted free service so those who are volunteers when they are free when they are leisure at time only they will do this service but mother teresa she owned like that she needed only whole hearted person one who do free survival throughout their life there is no holiday at all she is trust and she is strongly she is strongly trust that point 
In 1976, a contemplated branch of the sisters was opened. In 1981, she began the Corpus Christ movement for priests, and in 1984, the Missionaries of Charity for the was initiated. Then she formed the co-workers of co-workers of the. In 1981, she began the Corpus Christ movement for priests, and in 1984, the Missionaries of Charity for others was initiated. Then she formed the co-workers of Mother Teresa, the sick and suffering co-workers, and and the lay missionaries of charity. The congregation opened its first house outside India in Venezuela in 1965 with five sisters. Then in Rome, Tasmania, and Australia, by 1970, the order had reached. Several countries: Asia, Africa, Europe, and United States. In 1982, Mother Teresa rescued almost 37 children who were trapped in a in the in a front line hospital in Baruch. So, a sister must give up all her positions. One of them, for example. When she passed her final exam to become a doctor, did so well that she received a gold medal. She showed to her mother Teresa and was duly praised for her fine result. But the gold medal had to go back. It is no use to you, and you do not need it," said mother Teresa. So it was passed on to the next best candidate. The works, the work is hard. Dismounted Doyki. In his book, Mother Teresa reports how one of the sisters, sisters Banner, described the daily routines: "We wake up at four, pray until six thirty, and then have our first meal. We do our washing and cleaning of the house before we go out to work. The novices some of come home for lunch." Lunch prayer. The rest a little while, then have regular classes studying the rules and scriptures. They have tests before they are professed. We come our home at twelve thirty, go out again at two, then in again by seven thirty. We have to be back for prayers. This is very important. Mother doesn't want the missionaries of charity. to see them said simply as a social worker by no means so this way they are started their work started their routine these are their routine works they will they were did this does not mean that mother teresa does not value a social workers but the missionaries of charity have a different approach so here she explaining the difference between a social workers and missionaries of charity here in the slum she says in the broken body in the children we see christ and we touch him social welfare is for a purpose splendid and necessary but christian love has for a person this is a love is important Being unwanted is the worst disease that any human being can ever suffer," she says. We can see, therefore, why Mother Teresa has concern quite as much for those who cannot be cured, cured as for those who can. Surely, on her great desire was to take those who were dying into be. home to be loved and cared for that they might die with dignity and within sight as she says of a loving face so this is the explanation of a social welfare as well as a missionary of charity so social service means we have helping the needy people but in the charity we can those who are those who are in dying into home without a care without a love these are coming under the missionary of charity
Next one. The first missionaries of charity home in the United States was established in the South Bonnex, New York by 1984. In 1991, Mother Teresa returned to her home, homeland for the first time since 1937 and opened the Missionaries of Charity Brothers Home in Tehran, Albania. By 1997, Missionaries of Charity had almost 4,000 sisters working in 16 foundries. Sorry, 610 foundations in 450 centers in 123 countries across the six continents. The government of India honored her with Badma Shri Jawaharlal Nehru Award for International Understanding and Bharat Ratna, India's highest Shivalian Award. In 1962, she was honored with Ro uh, Roman Mahasese Award for International Understanding for her merciful cogni cognizance of the abject poor. In 1971, she was awarded the first Pope John XXIII Peace Prize. In 1979, Mother Teresa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. She suffered a heart attack while visiting Pope John Paul II, Rome in 1983. She died on September 5, 1997 at the age of 87 at Calcutta, West Bengal, India. In 2003, Mother Teresa was beautified by Pope John Paul II at St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. Since then, she has been known as Blessed Mother Teresa. She was canonized by Pope Francis on 4th September 2016 and is known as, as Saint Teresa of Calcutta. This is the overall life history of Mother Teresa. I hope you are enjoyed and you are understand these information. And these informations are useful for you for understanding and be known for known about mother teresa thank you girls thank you for watching if you like just like the video and if you have any question ask in the comment section i will meet you in the next class detailing about mother teresa